Hello guys and welcome back to the 18th part of the Kotlin UB2 Pro series. In the last part I showed you what um, function with return types are. So we created a function here, print pow, that takes a base and calculates the base to the power of an exponent and it actually returns an integer which is exactly the result of that calculation. So in, in that line after the for loop we return whatever the result of that calculation is and by doing that we can now deal with that result from within other functions for example we can write um, val pow is equal to um, print pow let's say 3 and 5 and then the result of that function will be saved in the variable pow in this part um, we will keep talking about functions so Specifically, I want to show you some different types of parameters that we can pass to our functions. First of all, I want to show you the var arc keyword. So we create a function here, for example, function get max. I want to return the maximum out of a sequence of numbers. And we can actually do that with a list. So we create a list here, which is of type list integer and that should return an integer again because we want to return the maximum of that list and that list is only um, filled with integer values. So that would work but the var our keyword actually does something similar so we remove that list argument here and instead write var arc numbers and those numbers are integers. So the var keyword now means that we can have a variable number of arguments of parameters that are all saved in numbers and that are all of type integer. So let's implement our function actually. We can treat the numbers here exactly as we would treat a list. So we can create a variable max here in which we want to save the current maximum value and set that to numbers at the index of zero. So the first number of those um, past numbers. And now I want to loop through those numbers in a for loop for each number in our numbers. We want to compare if the current number is greater than um, our maximum. So if that is the case then we want to set the maximum to our current number. So we initially set that maximum to the first value of our numbers and then we check for each number in all of those past numbers if the current number is greater than the maximum that we just saved the current maximum and if it is then we found a new maximum and set that to the current number and finally we need to return the value of max so we write return max and the difference now to a simple list is when we call that function so I want to save the maximum of a sequence of numbers in the variable max here and set that to get max and normally we would pass a list here so we would pass list of one two three for example but because we used var arc here, we cannot do that. Instead, we can just insert the um, numbers as they are in the parameters. So we can insert as many numbers as we want in a row here. Just some random numbers. And now, if we want to print the maximum, we simply write print line the maximum is and then we insert max so when we run this you see it prints the maximum is 15 and that is exactly the greatest value in our sequence of numbers here another really useful thing you can do with var or keywords is if we create an array here, an integer array, val array, and set that to int array of, so make sure it is int array and not array of, 
otherwise it won't work, int array of. And as you see, when I type that function, it also takes var arg elements here. And of course it does, because we can insert any numbers here into that array. So I'll insert 10, 20 and 25 here. And var arg um, can also be used to insert an array in between our just passed parameters here. So if we want to insert all the values of our array inside of our parameter list, then we can simply do that with the asterisk symbol followed by the name of our array. So what this will do is it will take the three numbers of our array and simply insert them here instead of the array variable. So if we run this now, you can see it now prints the maximum is 25 because we inserted the values of our array inside of our var arg function and now 25 is the actual maximum here. But for now I will remove that again and restore what we had before. I just wanted to show you that we actually have the, the possibility to insert arrays inside of var arg parameters. So that is one cool thing I wanted to show you. Another cool thing are default arguments. So let's imagine we want to write a function that searches for a specific string on the internet. So let's write function search for and as parameters I will pass the search. So um, the string we are searching for. This is of course of type string. And now we can actually pass um, a default argument. So now I want to specify on which search engine we want to search for that string. So I'll write search engine, which is also of type string, but we can set it, um, we can set the default value for that search engine to Google, for example. So let's just print something in this function to show you what the difference of a normal parameter and a default parameter is. So I write print line and just searching for um, search on and now the search engine, search engine. So when we now want to execute that function, I'll remove that above here, then I'll write search for and we have to specify a search, um, a search string now. So for example, how to become a good programmer. But as you see, we don't need to specify the second argument search engine because it is Google by default. But we have the option to change it if we want. So to demonstrate that to you, I'll call that function again and for example, we can search for how to become the best Kotlin programmer. And in this case, we actually don't want to search uh, on Google. Instead, we want to search on Bing. So we, in that case, we just um, insert the second parameter as we are um, used to it. So if we run the program like that, You see, the first time it prints searching for how to become a good programmer on Google and the second time it prints searching for how to become the best Kotlin programmer on Bing. So if we don't use an additional parameter here for the search engine, it will use Google by default. And if we provide a parameter for the search engine, it will use our new provided parameter for that. So that is a really cool thing about parameters and especially if you know that you have uh, a value for your parameter that can be used as the default value. Finally, another cool thing about parameters are named parameters or named arguments. And those are just a little help for you 
if you have a lot of parameters here and you don't know in which order you have to put them or you don't want to look up for that function, then if we delete that now, we can instead also um, type search equals and then the value of whatever we want to search for. So we specify exactly that we want to use the parameter search and insert something for that. So I'll write how to become the best Kotlin programmer again. And after that, we can also do the same for the search engine and use Bing again. And now the cool thing about that is that you don't need to um, have the, the arguments in the right order. So we can also use the, the parameter of the search engine before the search parameter. So that will also work. So using your parameters like that is actually really helpful if you have functions with many parameters and you don't know in which order you have to put them. Your homework for this video is to create a function alternating sum that takes a var arc parameter, so a variable number of integers, and then that function should return the alternating sum of those numbers. So for those of you who don't know, the, the alternating sum is that you take the first number as a positive number, then you subtract the second number, you add the third number, you subtract the fourth number, you add the fifth number, and so on. So that would actually be the alternating sum of those values. And if I remove that again and run the program, you see it prints the alternating sum is 4. And of course, if you type that into a calculator, you will get the same result. So now I'll go through the solution of the homework of the last video, where you should write an index of function that takes an integer list as argument and a value. And then that function should search for that value inside of that list and return at which index that value can be found. So first of all, we need to loop through the whole list that we um, passed as an argument. So through all the indexes of that list. So we go from zero to the list's size minus one. And actually Kotlin underlines that with a uh, yellow line here. It wants us to write it with that until keyword and that is what you should do if you have these calculations inside of your range but if you have only list lot size for example then you can write the double dot instead and you're perfectly fine but because we need to go to list dot size minus one we should use that until keyword here so that for loop goes from zero to the list dot size minus one and it checks for each value of that list if that value is the same as the value we passed as a parameter and if it is it should return i which is exactly that index of that value and if the loop is over here and we haven't found the value then it should return minus one so on the main function we just declare a random list here and tell the user that he should enter a number um, to search on the list for. Well, first of all, we print that list and then he should enter a number to search inside the list for. And we need to make sure that the input is not equal to null because read line can return null. And if it is not, then we simply print that line with um, with the call to index off. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope it was really helpful for you. If so, please leave a comment below. And also if you have any questions, don't mind asking them in the comments so I can answer them. And yeah, 
See you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.